Hi everybody, welcome back to another Creative Tap tutorial. This is now, I think, lesson six of my rotoscoping series. Um, and in this uh, lesson, we're gonna look at how we rotoscope motion blur and how we account for it within our shot, okay? So the video, the footage will be available. I'll put it on Google Drive or something. I'll pick something out. Um, it's a thousand odd frames long, the shot, but the shot I've used is um, frames 597 to frames 622 okay so I'm only using that bit for this example what I've got going on is I've got I've put this um, sort of graffiti I've very roughly comped it on there so it's not a proper comp just put it on there so we can see it I've roughly put a sort of graffiti on the background and if we look at the actual footage um, let's look at the footage here. We've got a lot of motion blur, a hell of a lot of motion blur. And sometimes people struggle where to put the roto splines and how to account for it, okay? So I'm going to be going through that today. So what we're going to be doing is just putting um, something on the back. You can put a checkerboard or whatever on the back if you want. I'll very quickly, I'll timestamp all this so you can jump straight to the roto, but I'll very quickly break down what I'm doing. Um, I'll put a link to this as well. This is a creative, this is... Um, Creative Commons license piece of artwork which you can get. I'll put the link below. I've imported this piece of graffiti, uh, reformatted it so it's um, let's turn the overlay on so it's gone to HD. I've transformed it down. I've then graded because if you look at the alpha channel it's provided, I've graded the alpha and just, just to crunch that in a bit. So I've got a grade node and I grade the alpha, bring the black point to 0 0.9 just to eat in at that a little bit. So let's just put that back up. I've then pre-melted, so we've pre-multiplied it to get rid of the background. Um, I've then graded it, so I've cut, cut, oh, there we go. I've graded it to color match it to the background. I won't be going through um, how I, I've the process of doing that, color matching by channel. Um, there will be a tutorial on that, um, but yeah. I'll, I'll make I'll make one of them. These are the values that I've got. My gain and my, my lift is 0.03 for each of the colors and my gain is 0.3 for the red and 0.2 for the green and the blue. So if you wanted those values, there they are. I've gone into the saturation and taken that down to 0.9. I've then just very, very roughly, I've brought a key from my footage and I've just got this kind of, um, I've used these values just to crunch this to get this um, alpha channel. I've then pre-multiplied this and I've overlaid this on top which gives me some of that texture coming through from the door, okay? So overlaying that back on top. So yeah, that's what I've got working here, brings the texture back in and when we come to view over here um, I've just overed this on top, okay? Um, so it's working quite nicely but then when I disconnect my roto uh, which is coming in on the right, uh, you can see that we've got um, some problems here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to correctly rotoscope this motion blur. So again, if I disconnect this, it just looks all terrible. So yeah, I'll t show you how to rotoscope this motion blur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my footage over here, just so we've we've got it. We've got the thing on top. In fact, tell you what I'll do instead of using the logo which I created in case you aren't able to do that with further guidance I'll just put a checkerboard on the background um, so scale this checkerboard down just something like that and I'm going to go into the double check double click the checkerboard and I'm just gonna make a color of it as well so it's probably gonna be an ugly color um, there we go that is a really really ugly color um, cool, so I'm just going to put that there. You, you can add a blur if you want, so just a blur node, and yeah, there we go, just something like that. Um, it's not even matching, so something like that, yeah. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to show you how to do the actual roto. So, again, like I said earlier, a lot of people kind of struggle when it comes to the roto, so I'm going to make a new roto node. They struggle to know where to start, really, and where to put their, um, where to put their, motion with their splines when you've got all this blur by here so what I'm gonna do is I suggest that you start see with the leg by here my leg um, you can see there's a lot of detail in the wrinkles when we get to frame 608 but when we come back to frame 603 that detail is very lost so what you want to do is you want to start on a frame where you've got the most detail and you want to draw your splines in so if I very quickly come in and do this um, let's just get my bezier tool 
come on down. Mine is going to be quite rough, and if I start taking too long with the roto, I may do some fast forwards just for you guys, so it's quicker, okay? But all you want to do is come in and just get as much detail as you can on a frame where you can. And then very quickly go through. Mine is going to be incredibly rough, okay? Um, just come around. Yes, yeah, so you get all that detail in there. And that's the best port of call, okay? And you you can basically, when you're placing these lines, again, just place it not completely on the, so not completely on the edge by here, but just where you start to see the edge of the leg come into full. I don't know if the, if, don't know if fruition is the word, but where you see it to come into full fruition, where it's, it's got a solid enough line, okay? So again, on this side. You're not going to put it over here because you are still getting a little bit of the leg by here, but you can see a solid enough line there to line it up, okay? And then when we turn on motion blur, that'll take care of it later. And you can even feather as well if you need to. Okay, so I've got that set up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to frame by about here, okay? And when I match it up this time, when I match it up, you can see the leg... It actually, if we gamma up or down, sorry, and we can actually see that this motion blur actually, this is the line where we're going to place our roto because that's the, that's the solid line. But the motion blur actually comes out to about here. So if we bring us down, you can see, yep, yeah, you can see now, let's bring us up a bit. You can see that the motion blur is actually coming out to around about down here. Okay, whereas if we come to the next frame, you can see it's clear. So you can actually see the motion blur is all, all stretching out to here. But if we come back in and reset these, we're putting our line just where just where it gets a, um, a solid, because the motion blur is actually going this way as well. Um, so I'm just going to line all of these up very, very, very quickly. Um, and you'll notice that detail that we penciled in earlier is gone, but you want to keep a little bit of it. Um, just match it up as best you can. So on this side, if we come back, you see we had a big sort of gaping hole by here. But when we get to this frame, it's more or less gone. And you can kind of guesstimate where it is. It's kind of just in there a little bit. Um, so yeah, you can come in. But because it's so fast as well, it's not the end of the world, but you want to get as accurate as you can. Okay, so I'm just going to go in like that. And essentially what you want to do is, I'm not going to do the whole thing, um, but you want to kind of come in and carry on matching up. Again, the places where you put your lines is you can use that little gamma, gamma down and exposure trick that I showed you. But what you want to do is you want to basically match up as best you can. Mine is, again, going to be very, very messy. But where you're putting your roto spline is going to be dead on this line by here where it starts to get solid. Again, if you gamma up, sorry, gamma down and exposure, I've done it a little bit too much. You can actually see. Right, let's start again. You can actually see that this this blur probably comes out to about but there. So if you start to gamma down and gradually come up, yeah, you can see it comes all the way out to at least by here. But then if I reset these, so if I put the, if I put this line to where it's coming out to at least, and then we we reset these, motion blur actually comes out to here. But you want to put your line where you start to get a nice solid more solid edge okay so i'm not going to go through any more of on on this leg because this leg then once you understand that oh it's pretty simple to do and i don't want to waste your time where i'm rot doing rotoscoping okay um what i am going to do is i'm going to delete this um bezier and i'm going to show you an example on the other leg because the other leg is a hell of a lot more motion blur you can see it coming in um and there's no real area where you can like with this one, we went on a frame where it's in focus and we set up all those splines, but you can't really do it on this one. So what I did for this one, guys, is I'm going to get my bezier again. Again, I'm going to draw my lines. You can see there's a, there is a clearish edge, okay? There's a, a clear enough edge. And I'm going to draw my roto splines just down here and my foot comes across here. You can see the motion blow stretches wildly out on this one. And I'm going to come in and again, the motion blur stretches from about here all the way to about here. But I can see there's a solid-ish line coming up here. So that's where I'm going to place mine. Okay. And this one is only about... It's weird. You can actually see motion blur all the way to here. So I'm just going to bring that out. That's the solid line by there. Okay. 
what I'm going to do is animate this very roughly now. Um, it's hard on this one to see where the actual line is. I can see where the bottom of it is, and it's just by here. Um, but again, I'm going to bring these points in because this motion blur that we see out here is not a solid line, and the when we turn motion blur on and enable it, that'll help us there. Okay, and then I'm going to do the last one because it's off screen, but I'm just going to make sure I animate it out so it calculates all the motion blur. Okay, so I'm going to come back, and I think there's one more frame. So just match up where that more solid line is and again it's hard to see on this side on this side by here so I'm gonna guess it's kind of just coming in down there and along the bottom of the foot by there cool something along those lines and now final frame I'm just gonna move out and there we go we've got a little bit of a line by there and that's quite a solid line actually so that's quite nice and again, I'm going to move it back for one just so it calculates the motion blur. There you go. Okay. I'm only rotoscoping 607 to 612. So I'm going to come into my lifetime. And with that selected, I'm going to go, right, only calculate this frame 607 to 612. So you'll see the lifetime now will replicate that. And it'll get turned, this roto node, if we come back before 607, it should, yeah, get turned off. And after 612... It'll get turned off, okay? But that's what we've got. Now, if we look at our alpha channel, our alpha channel is really, really solid. So this is where I'm going to bring in what I've done previously. So I've shown you where you should place them. Now, if I bring in my roto node from earlier, I've got all of this set up. So bring my roto node across. I've got all of these keyframed in now. So you'll see that I've got these just coming across like so. Cool. Now, over here you've got in the roto panel you've got these little icons now if I view my alpha channel you'll see that it's got this motion blur but the point you guys are at if I disable this this is let me just turn off in here as well motion blur let me just turn the shape for now this is where you guys are probably at now two things you've got two ways of doing your motion blur right you can do it if you come into the motion blur tab let's come back to a shape you can do it per shape or you can do it globally. Now I'm going to explain the difference between this. If I tick global, you'll see all of a sudden we've got motion blur. As we play through, we've got motion blur. And basically what global means is if you turn global, you've got settings in here called global blur, and yours are probably on 1 and 0 0.5. Okay? Global means if we alter these settings, it'll enable motion blur for every single roto spline in here with these settings okay so if i alter these settings it'll do it to each shape so what i've done is i've just turned the samples down so you know it gives it better quality and that'll affect each and every shape that you've got in here so as i turn it up okay and by default it's on one but as i turn it up it then gives a better quality for each shape. So global means these settings, it'll do it for every single roto spline you've got in here, okay? Now let me reset this to one. Now if you go shape, now by the way, with global, you don't even have to enable it in here. You can, but it doesn't matter. It'll do it anyway if global is ticked. If shape is ticked, ticked, you have to enable it. You have to enable your motion blur in here, and you can do these settings individually, okay? So if I, I've got them both enabled, but then if I come to this one, for example, I'll click leg one, and I'll put the settings really, really high for this one, so you've got no band in. But leg two, I'll come into shape, and I'll set the, the I'll put the settings really low, okay? And you'll see on leg one, they're fine, because I'm doing this, it's got its own attributes okay and leg two separate and then global like i said it'll just apply the same settings to the two of them and you don't need to label it in here i normally use global and the basic settings are one and 0 0.5 this is if we hover over we'll get an explanation sets the number of motion blur samples increase this for better quality now if we look at leg two we've got a lot of we've got quite a bit of banding in there because it's such a huge sweep so what i do is i turn this up to two and it gives us a much better, and you could even turn it up to three if you want to. It gives us a much better quality there. Um, and then with when we had it set on one, with the first leg, it had good enough quality anyway. So I would be, I'd use, for this shot, I'd just use global. But you could, if you wanted to, use shape. 
and enable it for each individual one for faster rendering time because a quality, let's turn this back to one by default, a quality of one for the motion blur for this first leg is fine. We've got enough samples in there. But when we get to the second one, if we turn this to one, one isn't enough. So for leg two, we could set, set it to say three. And for leg one, we can set it to one. If we did that with global, it would be high sampling for both of them and it'll probably take a little bit longer to render. So it's up to you what you can use. That's the main difference between them. Remember, if you're doing it per shape, you need to have it ticked on in here. If you're doing it for global, it'll do it. If you've got it on global, it'll do it regardless, okay? So that is basically um, how it works. Now let's finally link it up because you'll notice when we link it up, so we'll get the mask input from the merge and when we link it up, well, its own our graffiti or whatever is only appearing within our rotor and within our motion blur. So all you need to do is you could do two things. You could go this mask, invert it, okay, or so you can see then got this. Or what you could do is make a little invert node, and this is going to be better. And I'll tell you why. Um, it's invert. I'll tell you why. This invert was taking place with inside inside the merge, okay, and that's not that's not your best port of call. Um, it's easier to use an invert node because it, it shows your artist that this invert is taking place. If it happens within the merge, it's ah, there you go. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna give you the best result. So once you've got this set up, you may notice as you scrub through, actually it's showing through a little bit too much. Or if we come here. With this leg, you may think, uh, showing up a little bit too much. And that's okay. That's the first step of getting this working properly, okay? You need to line the rotors up as I first showed you. And then you need to rely on the motion blur settings to take care of it, okay? Um, what you'll have, if you get to a point like this, what you can do is you can then come back into your roto. And if you're simply not happy with house looking, what I would advise is give it a playthrough first. Because... When you play it through, it may look, okay, it's working. But if it's not working for you, that's fine. You've told the computer to do as much of it as, you, as it can. And then what you'll simply need to do is if you do feel that it needs a little bit more catering, that's completely fine. Um, you'll just have to come back in and you'll have to modify this and modify these points, okay? You can use the feathering settings if you want to. So you can use the feathering settings here. And that's quite often something that I would do if I'm not happy with how the computer or how the software has enabled it, okay? So you can further use that, and you can basically come back in and modify it. But the first port of call, like I said, is match it up to, let's just go quick back, to this solid line, okay? And if then, when you plug all that in, well, it's not really working because it's seeping through a little bit too early, fine. Um, you can kind of, you can play around with it then once you've let the software do the calculation. So it's a, it's a pain in the backside sometimes, this motion blur, but once you get it working properly, like I've kind of catered it and got it working over here, um, you, it's, 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 it works out really nice. You can see there, it's all blocked off and yeah, it works really nice, okay? Um, so yeah, cheers for tuning in. I hope that did help. Um, best of luck. If you need any more... Um, new tutorials and um, please send me some suggestions give a like and subscribe if it helped and i hope to see you in a future tutorial